Okay, we're going to talk about catecholamines and answer the questions, what are catecholamines and what occurs during catecholamine synthesis, storage, release, receptor binding, and degradation. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. So first, what are catecholamines? Well, they're a catechol molecule plus a side chain amine, where there's a catechol molecule, which is really just a benzene ring with these two hydroxyl groups, and a catechol molecule serves as the major building block to add the side chain amine and other molecules. So catecholamines are kind of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where if we take a turtle and add a blue mask and two ninja swords, we get Leonardo. But if we take another turtle and add a purple mask and a bow staff, we get Donatello. Well, catecholamines are kind of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If we take a catechol molecule and add an amine group, you get dopamine. And take another catechol molecule and add the amine and a hydroxyl group, you get norepinephrine. Let's do that again. So here we have that catechol backbone, and if we add that amine group, there's the dopamine. But we take the same catechol backbone and amine and add a hydroxyl group, we get norepinephrine. And we take the catechol amine hydroxyl group and add this methyl group, we get epinephrine. So there we've got the catechol backbone with dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. So what is the life cycle of catecholamines? Well, catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine are synthesized in the nerve terminal. They're stored in vesicles and then released into the synapse where they bind to postsynaptic receptors and are then removed. So let's do that with this diagram, this little chart, where the color yellow represents where things occur in the cytoplasm and in green where they occur in a vesicle. So tyrosine is where we start, and tyrosine is then converted by tyrosine hydroxylase into DOPA, the dihydroxyphenylalanine. And then DOPA is converted by DOPA decarboxylase into dopamine and through VMAT transported into the vesicle. Then Dopamine can be converted by dopamine beta hydroxylase if present into norepinephrine. Now, norepinephrine then can leak out from the vesicle into the cytoplasm and then synthesize into epinephrine by this other enzyme called phenylethylnolamine and methyltransferase and then transport it back into the vesicle uh, where epinephrine is stored in the vesicle. So, what we see is that dopamine is synthesized first. And from dopamine, we synthesize norepinephrine. And from norepinephrine, we synthesize epinephrine. So the catecholamines are synthesized in order. And how are they done that? It all deals with those enzymes that we see here in this diagram. Now, that was fun, wasn't it? Let's do it again, except we're going to use this diagram to do it. So let's first start with the synthesis and storage element. Let's start with synthesizing and storing dopamine. So this is a catecholamine secreting neuron and we take tyrosine and transport it into the neuron via active transport where tyrosine is converted into DOPA by tyrosine hydroxylase. And then DOPA, uh, that dihydroxyphenylalanine, is converted into dopamine by DOPA decarboxylase. Then dopamine is actively transported into the vesicles by vesicular monoamine transporter or VMAT. And there we have the vesicles are now filled with dopamine. And if this is a dopamine secreting neuron, synthesis stops here, like in the midbrain, in the substantia nigra that's responsible for movement, a lot of those neurons are dopamine secreting neurons. And so if for whatever reason those neurons are diseased and they don't work properly, you have movement problems with conditions such as Parkinson's. Now we've made dopamine, now come from dopamine, let's make norepinephrine. And this occurs primarily in postganglionic sympathetic neurons where dopamine was synthesized first and then is further metabolized into norepinephrine by dopamine beta hydroxylase or DBH, which takes dopamine and makes norepinephrine. And now those vesicles in these postganglionic sympathetic uh, neurons uh, right at the terminal will then store and release norepinephrine into the synaptic cleft. So once we've now made norepinephrine, we can now make and synthesize epinephrine. And this occurs in the adrenal gland, specifically the adrenal medulla in those chromaffin cells. So in the adrenal medulla, dopamine is synthesized first and then converted into norepinephrine in the vesicles. And then the norepinephrine leaks out of the vesicle and is metabolized into epinephrine by this enzyme called phenylethanolamine, N-methyltransferase, or PNMT, which I prefer, 
which takes PNMT takes norepinephrine and makes epinephrine. And then we, from VMAT, transport the epinephrine back into the vesicles. And now we have epinephrine stored in these vesicles. And so these chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla, about 80% of that norepinephrine is transformed into epinephrine in that adrenal medulla. And that's why 80% of the catecholamine secreted by the adrenal medulla is epinephrine. Just a little side chain here. The chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla and postganglionic sympathetic neurons are both derived from neural crest cells. And so what we see is kind of cool is that if we take a postganglionic sympathetic neuron, we see it's really just those cells in the adrenal medulla. It makes a catecholamine, specifically epinephrine, and releases that into the bloodstream, which is why the adrenal medulla is part of the endocrine system, releases its product, in this case a hormone, uh, epinephrine into the blood. And we, even though we call them chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla because uh, the chromaffin stains them brown, really chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla are just postganglionic sympathetic neuronal cell bodies. Okay, so the extrapyramidal system like the substantia nigra in the midbrain secretes, these are neurons secrete dopamine. Postganglionic sympathetic axons secrete norepinephrine and the adrenal medulla chromaffin cells secrete epinephrine. Therefore, chromaffin cells contain epinephrine but can also contain dopamine and norepinephrine. But neurons that make norepinephrine can also have dopamine, but not epinephrine. All right, so now let's go to release. Um, an action potential spreads and depolarizes the membrane in this terminal axon, causing these voltage-gated calcium channels to open, and you get calcium that flows in, where the calcium interacts with the vesicles, causing them to fuse with the presynaptic membrane uh, because of the snare proteins mediate the fusion of those vesicles filled with norepinephrine with the membrane, and as a result, norepinephrine is released into that synaptic cleft. So therefore, voltage-gated calcium channels open because of the action potential, resulting in that influx of calcium. The snare proteins cause the vesicles to fuse with the membrane and norepinephrine is released into the synaptic cleft. So there, we've got those first three, synthesis, storage, and release. Now let's talk about adrenergic receptors, shall we? But before we do that, let's take a wee bit of a detour. So anatomists said, hey, what do we call this gland on top of the kidney? And they said, I know. We'll call it the gland on top of the kidney, except they, some of them were speaking Latin, so they called it the ad renal, on the renal or on the kidney. And so the hormone is called the adrenaline, adrenaline from the adrenal gland, in which adrenaline, that hormone or molecule, binds to adrenaline receptors. Some of them were speaking Greek, so they called it the epinephros, epi for upon, nephros for kidney. So the hormone that comes from this is called epinephrine, which binds to epinephrine receptors. So here we have both Latin and Greek. And so anatomists said, do we take the Latin derivative for the gland, the hormone, and the receptors, or do we take the Greek derivative for the gland, the hormone, and the receptors? And what they did instead was they said, let's have a compromise. We'll use the Latin name for the gland, we'll use the Greek name for the hormone, and then we'll go back and use the Latin name for the receptor and call it an adrenergic receptor. That's not going to be confusing at all, considering they also call it the suprarenal arteries and veins. Ah, anatomists. So the take-home point is this. Norepinephrine is the same thing as noradrenaline, and epinephrine is the same thing as adrenaline. And we use the word, we use the Greek derivative for the neurotransmitter and the Latin derivative for the receptor, and we call them an adrenergic receptor. Just a side note, don't confuse adrenergic with adrenaline and androgenic with androgens. They sound very similar. Now, there's two classifications of adrenergic receptors. We call them alpha adrenergic receptors, specifically alpha 1 and alpha 2, and then beta adrenergic receptors, and we have beta 1 and beta 2. Now, another video on the adrenergic receptors uh, covers these all four of these receptors in more detail. All right, now let's talk about the removal of catecholamines. Norepinephrine is removed from the secretory site in one of three ways. Once norepinephrine binds to that adrenergic receptor, it then is released back into the synaptic cleft where reuptake occurs into the adrenergic nerve ending via the norepinephrine transporter or NET. 50 to 80% of the norepinephrine 
is reuptaked in this way, where the norepinephrine is transported back into the vesicle via, via that VMAT, the vesicular monoamine transporter. It's a beautiful recycling program of norepinephrine. The second way we remove norepinephrine is diffusion from the synaptic cleft into the bloodstream. This accounts for removal of most of the remaining catecholamines. Now, the third way is the degradation of catecholamines by tissue enzymes into inactive metabolites where norepinephrine is brought back in through NET and then the monoamine oxidase or MAO takes norepinephrine and cleaves it into inactive metabolites. Now, this can also occur for the circulating norepinephrine and especially epinephrine throughout the bloodstream by catechol ol methyl transferase or COMT. They're spread all throughout the tissues and that they will cleave those catecholamines into inactive metabolites. So a little review, postganglionic sympathetic neurons release norepinephrine and upon release, norepinephrine only remains active for a few seconds, demonstrating how quick the reuptake and diffusion away can occur. Now, in contrast, the adrenal gland, epinephrine from those chromaffin cells remain active until they diffuse into some tissues one to several minutes. And then there in distant tissues, they can be degraded by that COMT. And so that, my friends, is a little overview of catecholamines in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.